You know, we're constantly hearing about how the wealthiest 1% in America are continuing to get richer while the rest of us supposedly keep falling behind. And as a middle school teacher, I stand before you probably representing that latter category. But more importantly, thank goodness Toyota has not forgotten about the rest of us. Because I'm here today with the 2014 Toyota Corolla S, and in this case, the S stands for sport. And more importantly, as you can see, this thing looks like nothing like the Toyota Corollas that came before it. And man, isn't that a good thing. So hey, I'm Greg Cavanaugh with the Gallup Journey Magazine. Thanks for finding me out here on my old YouTube channel. I'm an amateur car reviewer, so stick around for the next few minutes as we check this blue one out. <laughs> Using kind of their standard issue 1.8 liter four cylinder with variable valve timing, makes 132 horsepower, uh, somewhat paltry 128 pound feet of torque. It's definitely no powerhouse, but it's kind of par for the course for, you know, an economy car of this size. And, you know, it definitely yields dividends in the fuel economy department. You know, at 27, sorry, 29, 37, 32 combined, you're definitely getting good fuel economy. Now those numbers seem to be more important than horsepower and performance these days. And I have to say I don't mind, but Toyota in this case has switched to a CVT, continuously variable transmission, I think in that quest for fuel economy. And while I think it does work for that goal, it ultimately kind of undermines the character and the quality of the car as it gives it kind of this groaning, undulating feel to the powertrain that just, uh, it just doesn't come off as refined or as smooth as a typical six or even eight speed automatic. And I have to say, I mean, it's, I don't have a problem with CVTs in general, but I do think the CVT here in the Corolla is just not as sorted as it could be and it could use some work there. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you keep it in the sport mode, it behaves a little bit more like a typical automatic and it has less of some of that annoying characteristic to it. And that might be an easy solution for those of you who are looking at purchasing the Corolla, particularly this Corolla. S. So let's get to the driving character here. That's the first thing you're going to notice when driving any Corolla is that CVT. And I have to say, I'm sorry, I just don't like it. And it's not a problem with CVTs in particular, it's this CVT. It just doesn't feel that particularly sorted. Uh, it does have these cool paddles here, which you can just grab at any point and upshift and downshift even though it's a CVT. They're nicely placed and that's kind of cool. Um, and it claims to have kind of seven speeds when you use it as such. There's a sport button here in the middle for going extra sporty. It changes the character only that it makes the CVT a little less annoying. Uh, as an S model, it's firm, uh, darty, it more feels like an attempt to be sporty instead of actually fully sporty. I don't know if it's the rims with the low profile tires or just a lack of travel in the suspension, but it does feel taut, but it also rides quite rough and it's a little bit loud in here as well. The steering is direct, which makes it fun, um, but it's kind of ambiguous and nebulous. You can't really, you just, it seems to do different things at different times. I can't really describe it very well. If you're making a full, uh, you know, sharp turn to come all the way back around, it works for that as expected, but suddenly then you're back kind of on the highway and you move it a little bit and it goes really, really far. And you know, it's, I guess it's variable, to, variable of course, but it's variable in a weird way. So think of the S model or trim line more as a styling exercise with some credence given to dynamics, but not much. Uh, you're probably best off not necessarily going for the S if you don't need the exterior looks, because I would guess the driving experience might be a little bit better sans S. This is a very important shot for me, and I think for many viewers, because it really gives you a sense of the size of the vehicle. Now, having just recently driven the Buick Regal, I have to say the Corolla here is very comparable in size, and what used to be considered a compact is, is fair bit bigger than what is a compact car uh, in the older days. So, you know, here in the back, I'm 5'8". As you can see, I have a ton of room here, knee room, 
foot room is really great. And actually headroom, it's a little deceiving because of the cant of the C pillar here. I'm having to lean forward to talk to you. But in terms of seating position, I've got more than enough headroom here. Um, yes, the C pillar and the squat windows do create a little bit more closed in, slightly claustrophobic feel back here, as does the dark interior. But in terms of space, it's actually quite good. The, the floor here is very flat. There's no hump in the really at all to speak of, as well as the center seat here. You know, it's not a particularly wide car, so three abreast for full-size adults. Um, you know, it would be a little more cramped, but I have to say it's not a punishment to be in the middle there, and for kids it'd be more than fine. Speaking of kids, you know, I have two little kids and uh, I had to put both their car seats in here during my test drive at one point. And I have to say, they went in just fine. Yes, the C-pillar made it a little bit trickier to get them secured, but in terms of seating position and space, a uh, nice flat seat works really well for my daughter's booster as well as my son's full-size car seat. And uh, believe it or not, even though this is a compact car, they weren't really able to very easily kick my seat, uh, which is always a bonus. So for families and um, lar you know, not particularly large families alike, the uh, Corolla actually represents a really good choice in terms of a uh, compromise between uh, space on the interior and actual full-size space on the outside and maneuverability, if that makes sense. Toyota has been pretty generous here on cargo capacity. In fact, I have to say, I kind of think the cargo capacity actually may exceed the uh, occupant capacity in terms of luggage to people ratio. Let's take a look. Um, you know, I've got some of my camera stuff back here, but I've also got my carry, a piece of carry-on luggage. This is my daughter's. I don't typically, uh, you know, travel with polka dots. But nonetheless, one, two, three, four, five carry-ons in there if you don't expand them to the brim or of course you could probably get a couple of full-size pieces of luggage in there and then also probably a couple carry-ons so that's pretty effective now the uh, seats are split back here but they fold down very nicely basically completely flat which is really great for uh you know sending me big screen tvs from best buy or something of the like and of course i got to give a demerit to these types of hinges because while they are a nice cost saving compromise they do impede slightly on cargo capacity but overall, kudos to uh, Corolla and Toyota in general on the cargo here. Toyota has done a really good job of redefining the Corolla, if you will, as a much more stylish, less appliance-like package compared to the Corollas of yore. Particularly a friend of mine's mid-2000s uh, Corolla just screams practical transportation for a college graduate you know this uh this has got a little more tude particularly here in the s trim now um the s model s trim you have here has kind of this unique front fascia and some other accents it's even got like a carbon fiber look to it uh at the rear valance which is uh, cool or not i don't know but um you know it does look pretty good as a whole i really i dig the black wheels the black rims i don't know how juvenile they're going to look five to ten years from now but right now they look pretty cool uh when i showed up at the dealership there was a silver one with the black rims sitting right there and i have to admit that that was a great color combination uh so inside here the the s isn't necessarily that different than the rest of the corollas but the I really like what they've done to the interior here. They've kind of gone almost old school, if you will, that it's not so bulbous and intrusive. Uh, it's kind of like the, the Prius C. The, it's a flat, low, kind of push to the, to the front dashboard that just creates a lot more sense of space here. It seems a lot bigger in the front here because of that. It puts the screen in a, in a real nice position and that works really well. The controls, I don't find them very easy to use. There's like a learning curve to know which button to push. They're just not as intuitive as other types of controls. For in instance, adjusting you know where your heat's coming from. It's, it's the button right next to the fan and I never know which way to push it to make it go to the vents versus the floor and so on. But the, the font is is really good and the size is appropriate as opposed to their trucks and SUVs where it's so cartoonishly huge for working with gloves but nonetheless it just looks funny here it looks great uh, gauges are great uh, I like the choice of materials with the silver accents and kind of this piano black finish and the stitching and stuff really a great place there's accents in the center of the seats with a uh, kind of this leather at leatherette uh, with stitching on the outside so I, you know really when it comes to packaging and styling, it's, it's quite good. I, Toyota has stepped up their game in that respect. 
you know there's some nice features incorporated you have a backup camera here in the center screen even without getting the nav or the in tune system uh, LED lights are standard which is a uh, you know, fairly classy and 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 uprated, upgraded. So you know, I, they're they're giving you some bang for the buck in that respect. And uh, those are some key features that uh, others could leave out, and you would be expect to option up. And most people wouldn't complain. Here, you're getting them standard. As always, a big thanks to everyone involved here. First of all, a big shout out to uh, Amigo Toyota here in Gallup, New Mexico. Great guys, easy to work with. Pull up on the lot and they you know, help me find something that's relevant and hopefully great for uh, viewers to check out. Uh, so check out their link in, description, in the description, Amigo Toyota of Gallup, New Mexico. And of course, a big thanks to everyone here who supports and watches, likes, views, subscribes, uh, shares, and of course, comments. Love your comments, positive and negative, and the, com the uh, discussions that generate from them. I try and respond to them as best as I can. Thanks for stopping by. I hope this review was helpful. Adios. Here's me crawling across the car after I've set up the camera. This will probably make the bloopers real. 2212. Can you hear me? Check, check. Ground control to your tongue. This thing does have a backup camera. It's kind of cool. Hope I don't hit anything. Trying to get out of this area.